start where do we start yeah. I will sing a little song but it ain't very long about a lazy farmer wouldn't hold his corn and why it was I never could Tell for that young man was always well. That young man was always well. He planted his corn on June the last. In July it was up to his eye. In September there came a big frost, and all that young man's corn was lost. All that young man's corn was lost. I've been climbing at Obed for a long time now, and it's kind of always felt like a second home to me. My climbing kind of started at Lily Boulders because of the convenience of it being super close, and I don't know, I kind of just tried every problem, pretty much. I learned a lot climbing there over the years. However, I was starting to run out of things to do. So eventually I wanted to explore and see what else Obed had to offer. There's this picture of Charlie Van And at River Sports of him climbing Shattered Mines, and I don't know what drew me to that climb, but I just wanted to go try it. And then, um, basically, we weren't supposed to go to main areas because of COVID. This was like early 2020. And yeah, we were just, we had our little group or whatever it was called, the bubble that you're supposed to be maintaining. And we just hiked out to the minefield, which uh, was quite eventful since we started out at Lily Bridge and because the river was raging, we had no chance of crossing. Um, so we drove out to Jet Bridge, which was the first time I'd ever been there. And I don't think we knew we were getting into because I think we each had just a little bit of water, maybe a liter or so. I don't think any of us had snacks. And it ended up being a two hour trek through bushwhacking and just total garbage to get to this climb. And my first try, I almost flashed it and Finn broke it next go. So we had to spend a lot of time figuring out new beta. <laughs> On the walk in, they were like, oh yeah, this is uh, this is Sunday vibes from that Uncharted Lines video. I don't even think I recognize that they even said that because it wasn't until like two times later that I even realized there was a climb that we passed on the way to Shattered Mines. Once we went out to Shattered Mines, I was kind of inspired to go back and watch Uncharted Lines again because we walked by point of view and I was Something about that line just really inspired me. I was like, whoa, there's like some, I guess they're already charted, but there are some like really cool lines at Obed that I haven't even like heard of basically. And so I screenshotted all the videos uh, from the Uncharted Lines and just put them on my phone and basically got Ryan to show me where they are because he again knows where everything is. So I started with Sunday Vibes, aka First Boulder. I hate the day, I hate the day. You know the day that I was born. It 
ever since I've been born. A dark cloud been hanging over my head. And that was, I think, one of the fastest tens that I ever done. So it was like, kind of like unlocking this uh, ability to start putting down kind of harder projects quickly. Um, and I went out to Point of View, which was significantly above my pay grade, but came back, I think, over a year later and just finally did it. Which surprised me, considering how hard it had previously felt. And it was cool to see the progress from the previous year. And then I was like, well, I might as well just keep going. And I found uh, No Man's Land, which I was not even <laughs> close to doing the yes. normal beta and just heinously crimped through this like heinous two finger pocket and kind of broke the beta, but ended up being kind of the same grade anyway. I was born on a bad side. And a dark cloud hangs over my head all the time. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Mother, father died and left me. It left me on my own. When I was 12 years old. Oh, I was drifting and drifting. The whole line of uh, No Man's Land was really cool. It has a really neat top out for Obed. You don't usually see too many non-hanging drops with sloper top outs that are kind of cruxy. I don't know, something about those lines were very inspiring just because they were, even though they had already been done, it was kind of the first non-pro ascents of after they kind of stormed through Obed and put up a bunch of hard lines. After doing some of those climbs, I saw how much untouched rock there was and it inspired me to go exploring and find some gems of my own. So it was just time to start walking around and exploring things. I saw some boulders across the river um, and ended up just going and hiking upstream from the bridge. And I found some boulders by the river and kind of a larger cluster up an old road bed. I went and told Ryan and Finn all about it. And of course, Ryan had already seen everything, um, typically. Before. He went the day before without like totally coincidence that he went the day before and I was like wow this is weird I found some chalk I, I wonder what, what lines these are like people have been doing this I guess but turns out it was just Ryan and he went the day before and, and he then, always walks around with his chalk sock and just like taps holds yeah yeah it's basically I told Finn and I was like we need to go out here uh, there's a couple like climbs that we should definitely do and then some like really cool walls in general Finn and I, we were both psyched, and we both wanted to get on the problems as soon as possible. So we went out to them and started training, trading burns, essentially. Finn would do one burn, I would do one burn, and as we figured it out, we got further and further until one of us would send it. Oh no! Fuck! My turn. I was born. 
and, and uh, Squirrely Girly. Squirrely Girly. Barely FA'd that before, Finn. He was literally on the top out. And I don't even know, like your foot slipped or something. I think he cleaned it and I never looked. So he knew where the hold was and there was no tick mark and I was just shooting blind yeah, and hit a sloper. Right, that's right. Then we went to Blind Monkey. Blind Monkey. He barely didn't get to the top and I just... Foot slipped going to the barely left. <laughs> did it beforehand and uh, got the FA on this line that I cleaned up and found. But luckily those are like the two worst it's climbs true. here. I never see the sunshine. I bad luck, me bad luck. Sun never shine, sun never shine. Oh, into my life, into my life. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. 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 Come not done too many FAs. We definitely had chas goggles on and our, the stuff we found initially we, we, we thought was pretty awesome, but the further yeah, we walked up the hill end. back to the start, oh, um, the climbs kind of just got better and better. I'm excited for that. I believe. Yeah, we found Slapping Smop, which was, uh, what do we call it? Farmer John. Yeah, that was the original the project name. You know, once we cleaned up the arete, it was like covered in moss and wet, but it turned out to be really good. Yeah, I yeah. think it's really good. Let the sunlight, let the sunlight shine into my heart. Shine, shine. So yeah, slapping smop. Which I almost did. <laughs> I found this heinous, like, two-finger trash crimp that I was gonna crimp my way through this this line and just t made it literal. It's essentially the direct line. Yeah, it, it is quite different. So it is different, but not different. If, if, it's at first, I was like, "Yeah, this is totally a different line," and then I was like, "Oh wait, no, uh, it's the exact same line. I just did it with bad beta and made it much harder and way lamer." That whole boulder is super pretty. It reminds me of the Tilted World Rock. Um, just like some of the best at the Obed. Uh, ground control is to the right of Slapping Smop. We tried that the same day we did uh, Slapping Smop. And it just felt awkward to do the crux. Heel above, it's like sloped. So your heel's like above your hands and the fall's awkward, but you just gotta commit really hard. That is also a really good rock. One of my favorites out here. Luckily, we'd sent that one after we cleaned up the top out. Yeah, and that whole line. I mean, that had uh, ground control, right? Yep. What, what else did that I have? I call the far right, if you're looking at the wall, it's, I just call it um, Ryan's V4 lip or something like that, because he doesn't name anything. So I always call his lines Ryan's Aret, Ryan's right Aret, Ryan's left Aret, Ryan's, or Ryan's lip. Or like, yeah, we just name Ryan's problems because he does them and doesn't care about FAs. So after slapping Smop, we came out here and uh, Ryan pointed out what is now Galactic Slumber. And uh, we did one session, I believe, and it didn't feel too possible, but I knew it would go in time. And uh, we came back. I think a whole year later, maybe two years, I can't remember again. The climb starts under a big roof on two thin crimps. Uh, we thought it would be really hard at first because you only have one really low foot to make a big move off of. But then Luke suggested this wild pogo beta. 
So you start going left hand to an undercling, then immediately pogo to a jug and hold a crazy swing. After that, you do a couple more compression moves out the roof and finish up a tall arete with a tricky roll onto the slab. And yeah, just a full package climb. So at the end of high school, 2019, I had this flare-up of like hives, it didn't go away for four or five months. And uh, once I had to go on some pretty harsh medicine to get that to go away, but I was hoping never again, and it happened again. Yeah, he previously had this really weird hive thing and it came back and it was like kind of messing with his climbing ability. And also he was on immune suppressants at the time. So he couldn't really climb, there's another reason he couldn't like climb with everyone, but um, we went out and he was trying to line to the left of Sunday Vibes. Uh, yeah, I tried it like our first day out there after like the expedition day, like we went out to do Sunday Vibes and I tried the project a little bit and it, it felt like honestly impossible. Like the moves were really off balance and the rock is a little weird, like the slanted landing, you didn't, I didn't know how to like deal with that, but turns out it was doable. and. and I was coming out on a weekday by myself and I texted Zephan um, hoping he could come because I didn't want Yeah, it's kind of sketchy. Yeah, I didn't kinda want to do it alone. sketchy to do it by yourself. What's up? Yeah. It starts off with some not super hard but pretty tensiony and tricky climbing out the roof. The crux is a big move out left with tricky feet to set up for the powerful cross to the jug. It finishes straight up the face from what complete but surprisingly puntable finish. It's not over until you're standing on top. It took both Stefan and I a whole session working together to make the bottom flow well enough to uh, have a chance at sticking the crux from the bottom. Since I was only trying these hard projects while in the medicine, I was convinced that I was getting weaker. Having friends there to support me in session with me yeah. kept me yeah. from feeling too down on myself, yeah. honestly. In the end, this process made the send perhaps the highlight of my season. No. I'm out of shape, you know? I would be strong enough if I was stronger. You're so stronger. Yeah, but. <laughs> I was going out to hide mine because I was on these medicines that I couldn't be around anybody because COVID and whatnot. I was suffering of severe hive breakouts daily. And I still squeaked out this pretty hard FA, which was cool.
were thinking of names. And uh, we were like walking out and Stefan mentioned Hive Mind and that, that one stuck for obvious reasons. Yeah, come on. So Finn and I uh, worked a lot of the problems together and they seemed to usually suit his style. So I knew that if I wanted to get a hard FA, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to find something that suited my style uh, very well. Eventually, I found this ultra looking line, which eventually turned into the Bad Blood Project. Yeah, that was the first thing that caught my, my, my eye, but it kind of looked so blank, I didn't even consider it a climb. It wasn't until like almost a whole year later that I got up on a rope and just to see if there's even holds on it, I cleaned it up, um, tried it with Ryan. I think Ryan had broken his wrist at the time, so he just came out and belayed me. The project climbs up this really tall face on these small holds. The crux revolves around dead pointing to these really bad sloper crimps and then having to have a deep lock off to these really condition dependent holds. Yeah, and I still haven't done it. Um, I don't know, it's been about eight sessions now just working that one crux. Yeah, so um, I had worked Bad Blood for a long time, which I kind of came up with that name because I got a blood clot from climbing a couple years back in 2018, and it has really been quite a nuisance when it comes to climbing, especially big moves that are like full extension on my left shoulder, which one of the cruxes, I guess one of the harder moves on Bad Blood is kind of a a huge dead point to this like little crimp which kind of makes my condition worse. Um, so I kind of, as a joke, named it Bad Blood because I had a blood clot um, and my blood is just bad, I guess. The crux, it kind of started irritating my arm and it was a hassle to rope up every time and get a partner and I kind of just wanted to find something that was within Maya's style. So my search continued. And eventually I stumbled upon Inner Gates, uh, which I kind of had the vision because I couldn't even come close to doing Galactic Slumber, but uh, found these micro footholds. Um, you know, I thought this would be a great start hold for, for your hands and just yeah, just really bad sloper crimps as very obvious start, and you just go straight out the roof. This is actually where we were originally trying Galactic Slumber, but Finn hated those holds. Boy, he has zero power when it comes to sloper crimps in a roof, I guess. Uh, so it was the perfect line, really, for me to F.A. It climbs into the start of Galactic Slumber, but breaks right with this huge dead point move to a heinous yeah. blade crimp. <laughs> Fortunately, this move was with my right arm, and so it didn't really aggravate my arm as much. It was a really nice challenge for me, because despite it being within my style, it was still really hard. I ended up getting actually two blood clots. But anyway, that kind of resolved itself, but the harder I climbed, the worse the symptoms got. So eventually it got so bad that I was barely able to even climb like once a week or so. And uh, we decided eventually that surgery was kind of the only option if I wanted to keep climbing. And there was the risk that I would probably, that I could, maybe not be able to climb again after the surgery. I just didn't know. There was just, there was always the possibility in the back of my head. So I knew my surgery date, and I knew that I had to get stuff done before then, just in case I would never climb again. And so I found, I locked onto Inner Gates, which I named that after <laughs> the Naruto Inner Gates. Originally, the, the, the stand start was called Rock Lee, because he, in one of the episodes, unlocks these inner gates of tryhard, basically, of chakra, the 
unlocking the gates of chakra or whatever. So I named it after that because I had to like unlock this level of tryhard that I didn't, I hadn't previously done. And especially after like getting shut down on bad blood so many times, I can't even do the, the crux in isolation working it. I don't know, hundred plus times on that crux move. I think on my seventh day, I finally did inner gates and it's totally my style. Because it's one thing to do like work galactic slumber and get shut down because I don't know how to do that kind of movement. But if it's in, within my wheelhouse and getting shut down, it's like you have to kind of Ew. unlock this level of try hard. Oh, darn it. All right, well, I can do that again probably. After I did inner gates, yeah, it kind of unlocked this thing where like I knew I could start doing things. Yeah, and Galactic Slumber, like I didn't think I'd ever do that move. That, that's just totally anti-style for me. And I think once I did inner gates, it kind of unlocked this like try hard that I didn't know I had, I guess. Uh, that Luke had always told me that I just need to try hard and I'll send stuff. So I guess that's what happened. And uh, I finally did it. And then uh, with that newborn confidence, I decided to finally establish the low start that Finn had left open since he hates, he really does not like that start. So I finally reversed the rolls and sniped one with, from him that was not within his sight. <laughs> oh yeah. I was very injured that whole, the 2021, 2022 season. So I spent a lot of time, I was really psyched on just like the development. So I, I cleaned up a bunch of lines. Yeah, just kind of trying to pick some of the, the obvious gems, even if they aren't like super hard, just the, the obvious lines that are, I knew could be turned into good rock lines. Hibernation was one I was really inspired by like the roofs out here and how just dead horizontal that entire roof is. It's like this massive, massive roof goes back, it's super wide. And then like right in the middle of it, there's like this perfect rail feature. But like the first time going under there, I like wasn't sure if there would be enough holds to do it. There was some dimples, there was some like random things, but that was not clear if it would actually go. So yeah, I spent, I spent a couple days just like while Finn and Luke were trying galactic slumber and 
their projects over on the, in the uh, other corner, just like trying different betas, all trying to figure out how to grip all the holds. Uh, and I eventually found this like really perfect foothold for this knee bar. And you just like knee bar this rail and do this like wild contortion around the your hand while in this knee bar. And then, but like the knee bar is good, but then your hands get really bad. So you have to do this like <laughs> crazy foot release to like get established at the lip. And yeah, for me after that, it's still not over. The last couple moves are pretty hard, way harder than you want them to be there. I'm out here day, day four or five on the rodent acrobat project here. Did all the moves, did all the links, just trying to put it together it's got the, the fun knee bar crux in it. Some a wild, wild sequence out of a locker heel hook. And then you have to do that and then do the like still sort of powerful finish. That one meant a lot to me. It was definitely, it took me, I think, six or seven days of like effort, of like focused effort to put the whole line together, like from taking it from just like this imagination that something could be there to like solving the beta and then ultimately like sending the whole line. Uh, it was really exciting to do that type of like hard FA. I've always found like doing first descents to be like a really interesting, almost like creative outlet where you get to show like not only are you contributing to the to a whole area, but you're kind of getting to like create something from nothing. Like you're you're walking around, you're finding like a random boulder and then you're polishing that up into like a an actual line. The first time I came out here was with Stefan to see his project Bad Blood. As you come up the old roadbed, the first thing you see is this massive boulder. Stefan's project looked really cool, but borderline impossible. But I noticed the face to the right looked a little more doable. Immediately it was something I wanted to climb. Beautiful rock, tall, proud face, everything I looked for in a boulder. When we first checked it out, all we could see was uh, three good horizontal holds. We thought that it might be uh, just three huge dinos straight up the wall. But that sounded just wild, especially with how tall the boulder was. So I threw a rope down uh, to check it out. After some brushing and scrubbing, we, we found just enough holds that it seemed like it would go. The crux turned out was near the top of the boulder. You have to reach up to this little dimple crimp uh, way up high and then you have to get your foot up at the same level as your hand and do a massive lock off to a good edge. But it's not a lock off that you can just do statically. I have to start the lock off with a mantle and then dead point out of it to the, the jug. 
That lock off dead point move is very committing, especially at that height. You never know if you're gonna stick it until you get to the finish hold. Uh, the boulder is, is huge. But every time we come up, we would realize how tall it was. So we built up a landing and started te taking test falls to see how safe it was. That's not too bad. <laughs> Once I had the, the moves dialed, it was a matter of uh, putting it together and seeing if I, could, if I could do that move up high. We lugged a bunch of pads out here and I, I decided just to go for it. split second of, of uncertainty while I was reaching for the hold seemed to stretch out forever. It took a while for it to get a repeat, but eventually I got Finn psyched on it and we rallied another crew with pads. It's so fucking high. I don't know how scary it is. I think it would be pretty scary going for it. Yeah. Falling, but. Whenever you're ready. Let's see. One time. Just gotta do that move one time. Holy shit! Ah! Wow. That was... That was scary. 
<laughs> I did not know if you were gonna do that on that go. Me neither, dude. <laughs> I thought I hit the hold kind of shallow and I hit the intermediate poorly. Whoo! Damn. Wow, dude. That was sick. That was beautiful. Let's go! Good one. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Got the foot up. Grab the intermediate too far right, so the good part was like between my my fingers, and committed, and then like caught it like there. I was like, yeah, you're Woo! barely on with. Got it. No, that was like a ten out of ten experience. I have, haven't done a move that hard, that high ever. That's for sure. <clears throat> it was scary watching Finn up there, but it was cool to see him experience that same moment of commitment. I really appreciate having the Obed as a home crag. I try to make the most of it and repeat as many of the new and old climbs as I can. With the addition of Hive Mind and a few other climbs near Sunday Vibes, it became one of the more stacked boulders at Jet Bridge. This meant there was projects for everyone, so it was easy to get a crew together to come out in session during the week. What do you think, Liz? Vibes are good. Tunes are good, temps are good, crew's good, rock's good, skin's good. Got some good chalk in my bucket. Get out there. Get out there. Good. Come on. I started Come on. working on Five Minds while no. Nick was Project yes. B Sunday Vibes. Oh, damn. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. Yep. Come on. Just a pull up. Yes. Tight. Come on, Nick. Tight, tight. Yes. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jug and come. Yes. The song is over. I've mind came down to one move for me. I tried every beta variation Hi. I could think of, but eventually I returned to Finn's original beta. I must have tried that move hundreds of times. Yes, come on. Crimp, 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 crimp. Yes! When I finally stuck it, yes! I was so psyched I had to text Finn as soon as I got service. I can do it, Finn. <laughs> Once I figured out how to make that move somewhat repeatable, I could start giving it links from the ground. At this point, Stefan and Peter were psyched on trying it as well, so we traded burns back and forth. After one big punt, Peter yeah. beat us yeah. to the yeah. third set. No. <laughs> As my links got bigger, I continued to get closer to sticking the crux in the ground. Good, okay, now we can all come back together. Good, thank God. Get it good. Come on, pull into it. Come on. Come on. No. Get that tail hook. Come on. Come on, jump into it. Pull up. You got this, Luke. Pogo. Take it. Don't you dare stop. Pogo, don't stop. Come on. Core, core. Get that foot high. Come on, squeeze. Squeeze, Luke. Come on. Crimp those fingers. Pour some Eventually, down. I stuck the crux, but I was squeeze. so tired on, that I fell crimp, on the last Luke, move. Come on. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Come on. Then I stuck the crux again and once again fell at the top. This happened three or four times in a row. I was sticking the crux every time but it was too gassed to finish it up. How many is that? Three. Three. Mind blowing. Three. Three boots. Straighten that leg. Straighten the leg. Come on. 
Then Finn suggested I use the sloper instead of the crimp. After trying that bit, I knew it was the way. So I came back the next week on a slightly warmer day, only to find the entire boulder condensed. After some drying, I finally got the boulder climbing full again. So I pulled on and fired at first go from the ground. It was really rewarding to put so much effort into a climb and see all the hard work finally paying off. It was also really fun trying it with my friends, and I think Stefan's a lot closer to sending than he realizes. Um, yeah, despite all of Finn's support after many, many, many sessions on it, I. Um, still was unable to do hive mind this season. Honestly, that process was more interesting to me than trying something I knew I could do. And even though the failure was frustrating, that's kind of where I learned the most. You don't necessarily grow as a climber by doing things that are easy for you. And the challenge for me is what makes it interesting, regardless of the grade. There was always a bit of friendly competition between Finn and I doing FAs, but I think it was just a way of motivating each other to push ourselves. It got us to try things that we probably wouldn't have tried otherwise, and ultimately it made us better climbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Yeah, dude. But it's like, you know. It's still fun. It's all friendly. My doctor told me over and over again that if I just gave up climbing, all the problems would go away. But climbing with my friends was too important to me to give up, really. And developing JetBridge really motivated me to push myself regardless of the setbacks that I was having for my condition. Going out climbing is always better with your friends. Whether you're trading burns on a hard project or just goofing off in the woods, it's the people you're doing it with that really makes it special. <laughs> no! <laughs> what ultimately drove our development of like our own new things was going off into the woods and finding the older lines so we'd go out and clean these old lines that have been done years before and maybe do them, maybe not, but it was still really cool. And uh, that led to so many other adventures. Yes. Yeah, it good. Yes. So yeah, I saw Uncharted Lines for the first time in I think 2017 or 18. And then we came out here two or three years later and finally got to repeat some of those. And, uh, that kind of inspired us to continue exploring and like kind of leave our own mark. And um, I think we've done that. We've put up a lot of boulders. I mean, upwards of 30 to 40 from 
be zero to 12. So it feels good to like, as a crew from Knoxville, like come out here and put a bunch of stuff up and uh, hopefully people enjoy them for years to come. That's what's been cool about this is like, it's been a group endeavor the whole time. Like it's not, we've been going out as a crew and like finding the boulders and finding, like we each have to bring our own vision uh, and we each, we get to work together to kind of like find these lines that otherwise might stump any single one of us. Spending so much time at a home crag really allows me to test my limits. I can try things that I thought would be impossible, but coming back and trying them year after year, I can see how I've improved as a climber. And when one project goes down, there'll always be another one to take its place. Um, so, after the surgery, I feel so much more hopeful for what my future climbing career uh, is going to entail. Considering that I climbed one of my hardest projects, actually the hardest project that I had ever done, it, right before the surgery, when my condition was pretty much the worst it had been. And so now that I've been feeling just so much better after the fact, I'm so hopeful for my the future of my climbing career. So I think I, I feel good about next season. And uh, bad blood, maybe here, here I come, wicked voodoo. I'll be back. I'll always be back. Jet forever! Jet forever! Jet forever. <laughs>